In today's video, we're going to take a look at the best entry-level helmets of 2023. And there's often a big difference in performance in this price range. And to give you a better idea of which helmet performs well, we're going to scrutinize all of them to find out which entry-level helmet can call itself the best of the best. So, stay tuned. <laughs> As a beginner rider, the number of helmets can be overwhelming as sometimes you have no idea what to look for when buying one. Or you're an experienced rider and because you hardly ever ride, you just want a good budget helmet. Then this video is for you. We're going to help you on your way and have listed the 10 best entry level models to make your choice a little easier. And by the end of this video, you will know which entry level helmet came out on top in our data review. During this video, we'll put statements made by manufacturers to the test and we'll find out if the claims made by these manufacturers hold any truth. We put a lot of time and effort into these videos with only one goal, so that you get to see an honest review based on facts instead of marketing language or personal opinions. So, if you appreciate this effort, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel and don't forget the notification bell so you're always up to date by the latest reviews. Alright, before we dive in, first a few things in general about entry-level helmets. And as the name suggests, entry-level helmets don't offer all the features that high-end helmets do. But it doesn't mean they can be safe, comfortable and offer fun extras. The entry-level helmets we will compare this year are the AGV K1S and the K3, the Squall i3, the i70, the Spartan RS, the N66 and N88, the 520 N1400 EVO and the Vector 2 Carbon. Alright, let's jump in. We're going to begin the data-driven review with the material part and for this part we look at two different criteria. The first is the material that the outer shell is made of. This can be polycarbonate, fiberglass and carbon fiber. Now polycarbonate helmets tend to be the heaviest and most cost-friendly material side, followed by fiberglass helmets and then in general carbon helmets will be your lightest helmets, but also the most expensive as less material is required to reach the needed strength. The second thing we look at is the number of outer shell sizes and the more outer shell sizes a helmet has the better. A helmet with more outer shell sizes not only looks better but will also be more comfortable as it will fit your head more precisely. When we start looking at the results of our contenders we see that one helmet stands out far above the rest and this is the LS2 Vector Carbon as this helmet is made of carbon and is available in no less than 6 outer shell sizes. And this number of outer shell sizes is a lot even for the most expensive helmets out there, so especially for an entry level model. This immediately gives it an ultimate score of 5 stars. Furthermore we see no outliers and all other helmets made of polycarbonate earn 2.5 or 3 stars thanks to their polycarbonate outer shell and 2 to 3 outer shell sizes. There are two helmets that are made of fiberglass and these helmets are the XO 1400 and the Spartan RS. The Spartan RS only had two outer shell sizes and therefore earns 3 stars and the 1400 is available in three outer shell sizes which earns the helmet 3.5 stars for this part. Ok, we move on to an important part which is the weight and the lighter the helmet is the better and the more stars it earns. A lighter helmet prevents fatigue in the neck and improves your overall riding experience. And to make a fair comparison, we weighed all the helmets in a size M on the same scale. If we put all the results in the graph, we see that once again the LS2 Vector Carbon tops the list with a result of 1391 grams and it's the only helmet that weighs under 1400 grams. The helmet owes this to its carbon outer shell. Furthermore, we see that the Spartan RS and the XO1400 and the K1S remain under 1500 grams and each earn 4 stars for the Spart. All the helmets we haven't mentioned so far weigh between 1500 and 1700 grams, which is an ok result and this earns the helmets at 3 stars for the weight. The Vector 2 is performing very strongly and remains at the top of the list and the other helmets are still very much in line and again there were no real outliers. So it's very interesting to see and let's continue with the visor of the helmets. Ok great, we move on to the next part which is the visor and once again the results are very close to one another. But first I'll briefly explain how the helmets can earn stars before we look at the results. In this part we look at several criteria and examples include whether the helmet is pinlock lens prepared and if the pinlock lens is included in the box and if the helmet has a drop down sun visor for example. Some criteria are rated more heavily because they contribute more to a better riding experience. Now let's see how our helmets performed. As you can see, almost every helmet earned 4 stars for this part. The helmets owe this to the pinlock lens preparation and that the pinlock lens is included in the box. Also, these helmets have an integrated sun visor, which is an important plus. The helmet that performed the least on this part was the K1S. This helmet was in fact only pinlock lens prepared and no pinlock lens is included in the box, which is really unfortunate to see. So the results remain very close and they meet the main criteria you want to see on a helmet. 
But we are far from done and we will continue with the road test results. And I can tell you in advance that we are definitely going to see some differences here. And before we look at the results, first a brief explanation on how we collect our data. On the left we see a white thermometer. This indicates the inside temperature of the helmet. This is connected to a sensor we placed in our helmet. Up in the middle you see a decibel meter. And this is connected to a microphone that's placed close to our rider's ear and records the noise the same way as our rider hears it. On the right we see a phone that displays the wind speed and outside temperature. This is connected to a wind meter mounted on the bike. And in the middle we see the dashboard of the bike showing the riding speed. All the helmets were tested with an average wind speed of about 120 and a riding speed of 130 km per hour. Now, with that out of the way, we begin with the noise. And helmets earn stars based on the number of decibels measured while testing the helmet out on the road. The lower amount of decibels, the quieter the helmet and the more stars it earns. We've established bandwidths with each of the number of stars a helmet can score. Now let's have a look at the results. If we place the results in a graph, we see that two helmets end up below 100 decibel. And these are the i70 and the Spartan RS. This result earns the helmet a nice 4 stars. Also the XO 1400 and the N80 earn a nice 4 stars thanks to the result of 100 decibels. The helmets that earn 3 stars in the section are the Squall, N60, XO520, LS2 Vector and the K1S thanks to a value of 101 or 102 decibels. The helmet that performed the least on this part was the K3 with a result of 105 decibels, which compared to the other helmets is really a lot louder. Also notable is the Vector 2, which had a great start with the material and weight, but still leaves something to wish for in this part. The XO1400 continues to score and is doing very well so far, but we're not done yet. Ok great, we move on to ventilation and a well ventilated helmet is very important, especially if you're going to take longer rides out in the summer. You want your head to be nice and cool. For the ventilation we compare the inside and outside temperature. A well ventilated helmet provides a good supply of cold air and allows the hot air inside the helmet to escape through air outlets on the back of the helmet making your temperature the same or even cooler in the helmet. When we look at our ventilation matrix, we again use bandwidths to determine the score. If the temperature inside the helmet is the same as the outside temperature, there is an excellent ventilation. The lower the temperature difference, the better the ventilation and the more stars the helmet earns. Now, let's see how our helmets performed. The best performing helmets in the section are the i70, the XO1400 and the Spartan RS. They had no temperature difference in the helmet compared to the outside temperature, which is an excellent result. Furthermore, we see two helmets from Nolan with a temperature difference of 0.5 degrees, which is an excellent result and also earns these helmets 4 stars for ventilation. The Squall and K1S also earned 4 stars for ventilation thanks to a difference of 1 degree, so it's fair to say that all these helmets offer excellent ventilation. The least performing helmets were the 520 EVO and the Vector 2. Despite a difference of 1 and 2 degrees, they earned 3 stars. These two helmets do not offer poor ventilation, they just fall short on ventilation to be among the top performers in this section. We now move on to the only subjective part of this guide, and that is the comfort. And we call it comfort, but we look at a lot more than just the comfort. And for example, the drag on the highway, the feel on the inner liner, the quality of the binding materials as a screw and glue, and the overall feel of the helmet. Now, comfort is hard to capture in hard numbers, so therefore, for this part we rely on the more than 15 years of riding experience of our test rider, who has tested all the other helmets on the road and can make a comparison like no other. If we look at the results, we can see right away that the most helmets earn 2 to 3 stars for this section. The helmets that earned 3 stars had a better finish, felt comfortable and had a better overall feel out on the road. The only helmet that stood out in this part was Shark Spartan RS with 3.5 stars. This helmet was the most comfortable helmet in this list, has a streamlined shape that ensures little wind resistance while riding out on the highway. The helmet's inner lining was also just a bit better than the average entry level helmet we've seen in the other helmets, according to our test rider. So we can say that the helmets offer a good comfort when looking at the entry level models and the results remain close. We slowly move to the last part of this video where we will now take a look at the features. And features are basically all the bells and whistles that manufacturers have placed in their helmets. Here we have taken into account the features that riders have asked us about the most. In our features matrix you can see how many points are awarded for each option. Of course, one option is not the other, so more weight is given to the more important options that contribute more to a better and safer riding experience. Looking at the results, we see that some bigger differences start to emerge between the helmets. The standouts in this section are the Vector 2, the N80, 520 EVO and K3. These helmets earn 3 stars and mainly owe this to the ECE 2206 certification. And this certification indicates that the helmet meets the latest requirements for protection and safety. 
all of these helmets also have speaker pockets and an emergency quick release, which is usually a more high-end feature and again contributes to the safety the helmets offer. The helmets are not only earned 1 or 1.5 stars in this part, offer hardly any additional options and are not certified according to the new certification. So, interesting to see the results. We're going to place all the helmets side by side so that there is a clear overview and you already get an idea of how the helmets stack up to one another. We see that the Vector 2 had a very strong start with 5 stars, but then it weakened a bit. The Exo 1400 has very good average score where the weight stands out, but really let us down on the features. N88, a Spartan RS and 520 EVO also score well on every part, but also have one segment on which they performed less compared to the other helmets. We can also conclude that the K1S and the N66 are not really in the running for the best entry level helmet of this year anymore. But they're not bad helmets if you're looking for a decent budget helmet. But before we look at the best entry level helmet of 2023, we will discuss one more part and that is the price. We have now arrived at the very last part and that is the value for money. And every helmet performs differently, but perhaps one of the most important factors is the price. If two helmets perform equally, but one of them is cheaper, that makes it relatively better, thanks to the better value for money. Or as we call it, the price quality ratio. To determine the price quality score, we look at two points. And the first is the price you pay per earned star. That says something about the price. And the second is the average number of stars the helmet earned. This is something about the quality of the helmet. If you put these two numbers in the formula, we get a price quality score. And that is factored into our final results. At the very top, we find the Nolan N88, which gets a price quality score of 4.6, thanks to a very nice average of 3.1, for which you pay 10 euros per earned stars. Below the N88, we see the XO 520 from Scorpion, which gets a bonus of 4.2, thanks to an average of just 3.1 stars, for which you also pay 10 euro per earned stars. Going down further, we see the i70 from HJC, with a score of 2.9, and in 6th place we see two helmets. The Squall K3 and K1 ended further on the bottom of the list due to a price quality score that was lower because the price was higher for the average number of stars they earned. Ok great, now it's time to add up all the scores, do our calculations and come to a final verdict to answer the burning question which helmet can call itself the best entry level helmet of 2023. And to keep things exciting, we're going to start at the bottom of the list. In 10th place is the HAV K1S with a final score of 6. It did not stand out in any category and was even disappointing on the visor. In 9th place we find HV's next helmet, the K3 with an average of 6.6. This helmet also did not excel in any part and was one of the loudest helmets we tested. In 8th we find the Squall i3 from Shark and the Shark did very well on the visor and ventilation but dropped a bit when looking at comfort and features. In 7th place the N66 which finished with an average of 6.7 and actually slightly better than the Squall with a solid result on weight, visor and ventilation but let down on the features. In 6th we have the HJC i70 which was very strong on the weight, visor, noise and ventilation but unfortunately finished at the bottom of the list twice on comfort and on features but despite the disappointing results for comfort and features it earns a very nice 6th spot with an average of 6.9. We have arrived at our top 5 and on the 5th spot we find the score Scorpion XO 520 EVO and this helmet has a very nice average of 7.3 and actually scored very solidly on every part but like the previous helmets did not excel on anything and in fourth we find the Spartan RS with an average of 7.4 which is a great result and this helmet performed well on all parts except for the features so unfortunately it's placed just outside of the top three. In third we find the N88 from Nolan with an average of 7.4 which is the same result as the Spartan RS but the Nolan's N88 has a lower price and therefore a better price quality bonus which ensures a great third spot on our list. This helmet also did very well and had the best price quality bonus which moves it up our list quite a bit. That leaves two helmets, the XO 1400 and a Vector 2 Carbon. And which came out on top? The answer to the burning question of which helmet is the best entry level helmet goes to XO 1400 from Scorpion, so very well done by Scorpion. The ls 2s Vector 2 excelled on weight and material and really trumped the other helmets by a large margin on these parts. It also scored great on the other parts, finishing at the bottom of the list on noise despite still a solid result. But overall the helmet performed great. The 1400 just performed slightly better thanks to its great weight, visor, noise, ventilation, but left something to be desired on the features. Other than that, this is an exceptionally good helmet. And if you would like more information about the XO 1400, the Vector 2 or any of these top 10 entry level helmets, then to be sure to head over to championhelmets.com where we always offer the lowest price guarantee and have great discount bundles. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more reviews, road tests and guides. Thanks for watching, my name is Tom from Champion Helmets and until next time.